The Armored Avenger Iron Man first appeared in Tales of Suspense number 39 in 1963. Tony Stark was a weapons designer for the U.S. government, whose transistor-powered inventions were able to make powerful weapons much smaller than anyone else imagined possible. After a weapons demonstration in a war-torn foreign country, Stark tragically tripped an enemy trap while navigating the jungle. The location of this incident was originally Vietnam, but it was later retconned to Afghanistan due to the nature of Marvel's sliding timeline, but that topic could be a video in and of itself. The injured Stark was captured by enemy soldiers and brought to the warlord Wang Chu. Furthermore, in the explosion, shrapnel had been lodged in Stark's chest, dangerously close to his heart, likely meaning he had mere days left to live. Wang Chu promised to have the necessary life-saving surgery performed on Tony Stark if he built weapons for him first. Tony recognized this as a lie, but he played along in order to get access to whatever metal and technology Chu had accumulated. While pretending to design weapons for Wang Chu, Stark began secretly devising a way to keep his heart beating. The next day, Wang Chu brought Stark an assistant, a notable Chinese physicist named Ho Yinsen, who was thought to have died, but was in fact captured and enslaved by Wang Chu's forces. Together, Stark and Yinsen designed and built the first Iron Man suit, which would keep Stark's heart beating and allow them a method of escape. Unfortunately, while the generator was powering up to start the suit, a warning light indicated that Wang Chu was approaching, threatening all of their work in its final moments. Yinsen rushed out, distracting Wang Chu, and sacrificing himself in order to buy enough precious moments for the Iron Man to live. Taking his first awkward steps as Iron Man, Stark used the suit's air jets to blast himself up to the ceiling, hiding in the darkness until he could plan his next move while Wang Chu and his forces searched the room. Shortly after, Wang Chu was displaying his strength by fighting his own men in the courtyard, but Iron Man emerged to challenge him. The Metal Warrior easily tossed the evil warlord aside, and Wang Chu's men fired on Iron Man, their bullets having no effect. When they tried to step up to heavier weaponry, Iron Man's weapons easily repelled them. Wang Chu fled to a loudspeaker, attempting to place a large bounty on Iron Man's head. But Stark overtook the speaker, drowning out Wang Chu's order with static and sending out his own message for the soldiers to flee. Iron Man pursued Wang Chu into the building, but the Warlord pushed a filing cabinet filled with rocks down the stairs onto Iron Man. I feel like I need to reiterate that. A Vietnamese warlord had a filing cabinet filled with rocks at the top of a flight of stairs solely for the purpose of pushing on top of people. If he did that to anyone other than Iron Man, they would have been turned into a pancake. Iron Man, of course, lifted the rock-filled drawers off of himself and continued the pursuit. Low on energy, Iron Man released a stream of oil, creating a line between himself and a shed of ammunition. He lit the trail of oil, the fire reaching the ammunition just as Wang Chu ran by, killing him in the explosion. Having avenged Professor Yinsen, Iron Man covered his iron armor with a large coat and hat before disappearing into the jungle. Of course we know that Stark made his way back to the United States, where he continued to iterate on his iron armor, making more improvements and soon becoming the Red and Gold Avenger we're all familiar with. But it wasn't until the Invincible Iron Man number 144 in 1981 that we learn exactly how Iron Man got out of Vietnam. In a nearby jungle clearing, a U.S. pilot named Jim Rhodes had come to the realization that his helicopter, having taken damage from enemy missiles, would never fly again. But before he could dwell on the consequences of this, he heard the clanking of metal machinery approaching. Turning to face his fate, Rhodey saw he heard the mechanical footsteps of a weary and energy-depleted Iron Man. Rhodey panicked and opened fire at the strange sight before him, but his bullets had no effect. However, his gunfire must have alerted nearby enemy soldiers, who attacked, shooting Jim in the leg. Iron Man stepped in front, using his suit's magnetic weapons to disarm their opponents. When another attacked with a sword, Iron Man deftly dodged with his air jets while Rhodey knocked him out with the butt of his gun. 
The soldiers prepared heavier weapons, but Iron Man's magnets were able to repulse the missiles, causing their enemies to flee. Now with a moment to rest, the two used the battery from Rhodey's downed helicopter to restore Iron Man to full strength. With Rhodey on his back due to his injured leg, Iron Man began trudging through the jungle again, heading towards the American defense perimeter thanks to Rhodey's directions. When the two took a few moments to rest, Iron Man, wishing to keep his identity a secret, explained that he was an assistant to Tony Stark and had helped him escape. Rhodey offered Iron Man a smoke, but it became apparent that the suit was not dexterous enough to handle small, delicate objects. However, before Rhodey could lament his loss, they were shot at by a sniper. Rhodey took cover while Iron Man simply uprooted the tree that the sniper was hiding in and tossed it aside. They continued their journey, reaching the area where the missile that damaged Rhodey's chopper had come from. Here they found a huge camouflage tarp, Difficult to notice from a distance, but obvious up close, underneath of which was a large group of enemy forces. Before the two Americans could escape and report what they had found, they were discovered and attacked. They fought their way to a vacant helicopter, which they boarded and began to take off. Iron Man left an oil fuse leading to an ammo stockpile, much like he did at Wang Chu's camp, which he lit as they escaped. The weight of Iron Man's armor caused the chopper to ascend slowly, but he was able to use his magnetic repulsor to push them up and away from the explosion, Rhodey demonstrating his piloting abilities by deftly dodging the launching debris. The two finally made it to the American base where Stark had his lab set up, despite nearly being shot down due to piloting an enemy chopper. Iron Man was able to use his security codes to access Stark's lab without revealing his identity, where he already began improving his armor, redesigning the chest piece so that most of the armor could be removed, while the essential components keeping his heart beating remained in place at all times. Several days later, Tony arrived at the hospital at Saigon where Rhodey was recovering to introduce himself and to thank Rhodey for helping rescue his close friend Iron Man. Stark also offered Rhodey the opportunity to come work for him when the fighting was over, which of course, he eventually does. And that's the story of how Tony Stark met James Rhodes, a man who would become his close friend, even donning the iron armor himself when Stark was unable, eventually becoming a hero with his own identity. But that's a story for another time. Let me know what you want to hear about next in the comments below. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more marvelous content. Until next time, true believers, Excelsior!